Orlando. Orlando? A wee wee. Right, which team do you want to be? Um, uh, I actually, I'll be you for. I don't even bother asking. Wow, dude. Indeed. No respect. Rude boy. Indeed. Changing all this stuff again. Uh, home team is going to be. What? Forgive me. Please. So, this is the first semi. We are already at the semi, damn. Alright, let's... Guess team is going to be... William Pay to win. Which, which uh, group are they in? B? Uh, B. We're going to be Pay to win. Okay. UFR was in D? No, we'll see. Let's see... We're going to pay... I mean, UFR. The UFR was not in C. C. Charlie. We are in game four. What? Oh, I, I just wrote semi one. A bit easier, isn't it? Much easier. So we have. Uh, Sometimes you get lucky when you think, man. I'm impressed. Indeed, I know. Sometimes uh, I flip a coin and it, it lands on its head. Right, so UFR versus Wargaming pay to win the f first semi final. The other one is going to be OM most likely against TBA. So, when is the final? Next weekend? Uh, yes. Let me oh, find out which date. Pretty sure it's on Saturday, but I might be wrong. You usually are. Yeah, well, you ain't wrong. It's not in our little. Day 3, August 6th. August 6th is on the Sunday, so I was wrong. And it no, starts no, at no one was 1600 CST. Okay. This would be the first final UFR has made to if they win. And I think the first uh, we're gaming as well. Apparently the Kutuzov got torped by Natago. What on earth? Hmm. Alright then. How did we miss that? That's a very good question. Well, uh, uh, for the record, I want to highlight that I saw all the kills from my team. So, <coughs> whoever was <coughs> controlling the other team <coughs> perhaps missed it. Oh, I love this shade, man. <laughs> <laughs> Being in the spotlight and having this nice shade. Indeed. That doesn't make sense. Indeed. How can you... What? what? Terrible <laughs> analogy. No, that was made no sense. <laughs> it's all, all too confusing, man, okay? Yeah. It's understandable, though. You can be a bit tired and not make, make much sense. Very true. Yeah. To hype myself up for this, I feel like I've just been... Asleep. Maybe we should. Maybe we should become hype casters. You know? Hype casters? I'm already a hype caster. <laughs> you know, there's just shouting over like, zoom in on torpedoes and scream about them. Yeah, and, and I have a face cam when we're standing up, like can't see yeah. anymore, can't can't control myself. Exactly. Because World of Warships is really a really a game where hype casting is. Um, uh, well, I horrible. mean, when things get hype in this game, they tend to like it tends they to get a really lot hype, of, man. yeah, it tends to be a lot of stuff going down at once because it's it's points positioning, like kills and uh, po uh, like time all at the same time, all coming down because it usually the shit gets real at the very end. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was about to zoom out and get my my planes out. Indeed. Oh wow, here we go. I heard that. No hiding it. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm hmm. Alright, so we got the French UFR versus the partially French Wargaming Pay to Win. 
Aren't they like partially French? I don't know. Are they? I think they're European. Look at this mother truck. He doesn't have the de this guy doesn't detonates, have, man. This guy doesn't have detonation flag. I'm gonna shoot him once so he dies to the flooding. Whoa. Do you get the same thing where you click, <laughs> press the right mouse button? There we go. It's like, oh. There we go. Okay. All right. So where exactly are we? Well, what do we see? Chapayev's Chapayev Chap. I mean UFR Chapayev Chapayev Charles Martel Kutuzov versus Atago Chapayev Kutuzov Charles Martel. Interesting. Double DDs Amaga Amagi NC Amagi. Mm -hmm. Huh. I and mean, it looks like they are going A. I hate when they go A because I'm afraid some people, like from my random battles, will watch this and go like, hmm, they go the A. The competitive teams yeah. do it, it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, they go A in competitive, <laughs> that must be the best place to go, and then they go A in my random battles and lose the game. Yeah. Um, we're giving pay to win, opting to go heavy towards C with Benson, Chapa, Kurosov, Amagi, Atago. And sending the rest, well, you can see the rest. Yeah. Heading down towards um, it. UFR sending a massive blob, five of their ships committed to C. And Benson solo B, Charles Martel solo C. Actually, NZ is supporting the Benson at B a bit, but it doesn't look like any sort of hard commit. I think they're going for the Charles Martel free cap on C, but I would expect some sort of counter from Atago or CM from Wargaming Pay to Win. Oh, how did they bait that defensive AA from the Charles Martel already? The UFR or CM already used defensive AA. I don't know how they baited that out so early. Maybe it was a misclick? Because that was that's a super early defensive AA. For wait, Zagamore did that? Yeah, Zagamore. He's used that's defensive. an empty die bomber. Yeah, I know. I, I I don't know if he was trying to like snipe it, but he didn't shoot down a single plane, so I don't know why he blew it. It's a small chunk from the AP, pops the speed boost, gonna attempt to cap C, I think. Risky with how much stuff uh, Wargaming has going for C. Oh, the Kudos of, of X-Men is popping defensive air. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get an NC into a nasty position though. UFR has charged down middle and led a smoke, and this NC has, is gonna be able to get, get, use that smoke to get in a really nasty position. Already some AP out on the Amagi. I don't know if he's paying attention. He is turning, so I guess he was kind of expecting it. No, not to do I don't think he turned enough. This oh. is a huge commit from Wargaming Pay to Win. Five ships going towards C. Yeah, the same kind of commit from UFR. Five ships going to A. The difference is B is being flipped in the favor of UFR. So that's going to be... And I don't think they'll be able to... Uh, contest? Okay. Contest, that's the word. Consist, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. How, yeah. how, how does the English work? Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to contest A. So no. that's going to be B and A before... Working the Benson is moving C. in to try though. Robustius, heading towards A. Like, To be fair, the only thing that's been spotted over there is the Amagi. Okay, well he doesn't know that there's a double Chapayev and a Kutosov uh -huh. in that smoke as well. So he's yeah. about to walk into his doom. But he oh. should predict that they could be there, because um, nothing else has been spotted. Like, you yeah. haven't seen anything else on the minimap. So it looks like, right now, it just looks like who can play the fadeaway game the best, you know? Yeah, but like, this is a big, big advantage. This is a big damn advantage. Because uh, oh, yeah. two caps to none at this point, and they're not even contested, generating a lot of points. Worst case scenario is um, the Benson from B manages to de delay C even further. He spots. Whoa, he's, yeah, he's torping it. If the Charles Martell or someone manages to spot C and they can uh, delay the cap even further. further. Shokaku is spotted. War game paid to win, Shokaku is spotted. Do they have anyone with. Do you have battleship with spotter plane that could hit him? Whoa, Charles Martel from Wargaming Pay to Win eating a huge chunk of damage as he gets into the smoke. 
Actually, he's still not in the smoke. He's Down to in half the smoke. Health. No, maybe that maybe that CB should have committed those torp bombers to try to drop him, and he would have been forced to turn in towards. Finally, C in Wargaming Fate to win hands, but that's a hundred point lead from the get go. Yeah, that's significant to say the least. You have seeds already popped. I think this is a radar popped by UFR. Uh, I see. Actually, it probably ran out. Because there was one accurate salvo, or two accurate salvos on the Charles Martel. This is such a nasty division they got that day, though. Uh, this three IFHE group. Oh, Kuku Benson was spotted. Oh, no, is that a second radar? Yeah, that's a second radar. I am not going to be surprised if this uh, Charles Martel bites it right here. Yep. That's a because that's triple IFHE. And a drop from the carrier. Oh my lord. They're forcing him out of the smoke. Even if those drops don't hit, the acceleration yeah. will force him to glide out of the smoke. That is if they have spotting. They don't have any spotting on the other side of the smoke. Wow, is he really gonna live? That's yeah, he incredible. must be. Why didn't. Should have loitered the uh, torpedo bombers a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. There was nothing there shooting them down. He should have just. Idle them. Oh, these mm. torps? Oh, they ran out. There were actually some really spicy torps heading towards the smoke, but they ran out. 150 point lead. Yeah. Amagi, Malimu, though, uh, in Ooh. some serious trouble. On very, fire. Very, very. 15k health. See, he, he got a Chapayev and a Kutusov on him, and that's double IFHE, and they're shooting at the same time, so every single volley seems to like chunk out 2 to, two to 3k of his health. Did he, did he get unspotted? No, he's still being spawned. Oh my lord. He might he might have got down here. Just Seed. got unspotted. Seeds is charging over there to smoke him. He's on fire again. No, he's spotted again. He should go down. Carrier should commit resources to get this guy killed. At this point. I mean, with this health, it's. Yeah, he's dead on yeah. this salvo. Pretty much. Or not, because. No, no. Ch oh, fire ran out! 800 health! Oh, no way. But Benson is spotting him. He takes a last ah, shot at is. the Benson before he goes down. It's a good pick, but. Um... Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's an impact. That is an important pick because. Um, now, when they fight UFR, they only have to angle against one battleship, instead of having to angle against potential crossfire. Uh, mm. And in a cruiser-heavy game, where both ships have four cruisers, um, battleships are that deleting power, and losing it is a big deal. But Masaru Damagi from Wargaming Pay to Win is in exactly the similar situation. He oh. is spotted on fire, low HP, and he's being IFH <laughs> spam. Oh, why did they send him over there? Yeah, why is he here? This is super questionable. I don't understand why he's even this far. Why isn't he like sailing away from A? Yeah, he should be by the other Amage at this stage. Yeah. Why is he? Why is he at A? Uh, this makes no sense. And I don't know why that uh, UFR Amage was as deep as he was either. Because like he was in the middle of B when he was started getting shot at. Yeah. So, huh? Oh. Uh... How do you pronounce this? Which one? Te. Te he he. Third, also. yeah, hello, that guy. Te he he he. Yeah, what about him? Te he he. He's also in a really oh, sketch man. position right now. He's legit. What? He is 11km away from three IFHE cruisers. Wouldn't be surprised, because he's heading towards smoke. Oh, but... Chapa, I've spotted. Is he? UFR this heat. Did he get spotted? No. Oh, he's so close. He's literally 11km outside of the smoke. And he's he's very lucky he didn't get spotted there. The smokes ran out and the Kutul had to re-smoke. And now they can resume fire. Yeah, this... he is just gonna melt. Unless he can fade back into stealth. That's... It's already lost 20k health, if not more. Yeah, and they're just gonna continue hammering him. That's the power of IFHE, you don't need oh, yeah. fires, you don't need RNG, it's consistent, consistent, heavy, heavy damage. There's a radar from the Chapa. I think they want to reset the Benson real fast, that's the only reason they radar. Danny the Drifter isn't moving though. Now he's moving, very slowly. 
That could have been a deletion on that Kuda. So the North Carolina from uh, UFR. Wait, they, they let the Amagi get away? And what? Charles Martel? Oh, that's the guy that blew his defensive AA earlier. He lost to the Ataga. I think it was a 1 versus 1. And he lost quite heavily. And we're at 100 point difference. And uh, Wargaming Pay to Win has a ship lead. But I don't think the ship lead means so much considering how low many of their ships are because UFR has been melting them with this triple cruiser. Oh, that's another radar. That's uh, the Kudasov finally getting punished by the... Oh, maybe that was not a radar. I'm not sure. NC punished him. I saw him lose a bunch yeah. of... Oh, smoke is running out. He re now, but I think the NC might get another salvo in here. Shit, the, oh, the NC might was... not need another salvo. Yeah, He's down uh, to 3k burning right now. And they're just spamming the same spot, all of them. Oh my lord, that's so much firepower, that's disgusting. Even the Benson... Oh, here comes NZ. Oh, oh here we're shot. They're going high right now. Oh, there's the radar. There's the radar, of course. Good to stop. they're making short finish, I like that. And then it's chopped by time, oh boy. See, Wargaming... Counter radar right now by... Um, Wargaming had a ship lead, but yep. because they're so low and forced so far back, they can't make anything. Like, look, the Charles Martel is literally border humping. The Amagi is so far away, he can't even effectively bring the firepower to bear. They have been chunked. This three man division from UFR has been doing a disgusting amount of work for them. Like, yep. if, if you give MVP, it's that three man division who has basically been moving in one big smoke, smoke blob around the map and killing everything they see. Meanwhile. Robustius in the Benson of Wargaming Pay to Win has found the carrier of yeah, He's UFR. never gonna get that kill though because uh, the Shokaku can park behind the island and for the Benson to be able to chase he has to sail past three IFG <laughs> cruiser fires and fire arcs. So, <laughs> it's never happening. So I think what the Benson is gonna do, the Chapa went down as expected, the Benson is gonna park behind that island, try to contest the cap and shoot the Shokaku I think. The problem is uh, their Dundi, the UFR Benson is sailing over there to help him. This looks like um, UFR has this in the bag after that. Yeah, like you said, there is no other word to describe it except disgusting amount of damage. And then. <laughs> Double shot by an Akutusov, yep. That's. Yep. It's gonna put the Like you can't everything. even smoke against it because it's double radar. It's. It kind of like moves it. Move, it's like this deadly blob that's like a massive snail that kills everything it sees. <laughs> yeah. A bit of DD on DD action here. Yep. On they're, done. they're done to getting the jump on him and with the health pull advantage. Should be a very easy. He's also playing it the best way you should. Uh, gunboat versus gunboat, you kite away and shoot backwards. Oh, he gets the fire. I'm not sure if uh, Robust just can. Oh, never yeah. mind. He was not even gonna. <laughs> he done he's like, no, no, you're not gonna burn to death. I'm gonna explode you with my guns. Targo, we're giving pay to win, has made it all the way around the Indeed. flank. The but... problem is, he's not really achieving much. I mean, I understand the plan was to harass this NC, force him out of position, because this NC, they put him in this position very early, and he's been able to do so much damage from here. So I understand the idea was to flank and force him out of that position. The problem was, by the time he managed to get to that flank, this blob of IFHE death has had moved through uh, A and basically yeah. caught up to him. Well, they have range and angles to start hitting the Amagi again. First salvo sets a fire, as you do. Of course. Benson is plane spotted. Damage control party ran out, let's see. Oh, some balanced battleship AP, saying hello to him. 998 fire. points, and that tick will end the game. Yeah, there it is. Slow and steady wins the race, and UFR was very convincing in that. And the, Well, besides the Amagi, I don't know what he was doing sailing around B, but he got caught with his pants down. and Maybe they had a gentleman agreement, like trade you an Amagi for an Amagi? Oh, sure. Yeah, I don't, that's but pretty much both Amagis had really questionable position. Like Definitely. I don't know what that Wargaming paid to win Amagi was pushing into A alone for, and I don't know why... 
the UFR and Maga was pushing through B alone. Like both of them super questionable. But besides that, uh, I felt like even though UFR were down ships, they never seemed to be out of control. Uh, like even when they lost the Charles Martel to a one versus one to their Atago, and even with the Maga dead. That deadly blob they had between A and B just slaughtered everything and seemed to work great for them. Yeah, for the second Amagi from Wargaming Pay to Win started pretty much at full health, and in the, a matter of like a minute, give or take, he was down to 20k. Yep. Like running for his life. And the thing is, even if it's healable damage, you're forcing so many repairs and you're forcing him so far out of the action that it, yeah. it limits his threat so, so much. Yes, very much so. Alright, so UFR takes the first map. Quite convincing, in fact. Let's see if the bracket has been updated while we have been doing this. TVA beats Vikings 2-0. Well, congratulations first of all to Vikings to making it to the playoffs to begin with. Their first tournament and they make it to quarterfinals. That's a lot further than many other teams have made it. TVA makes their first semi-final as well and will be facing OM. Not exactly the nicest way to be greeted in your first semi, but there you have it. <laughs> yep. And UFR, of course, takes the first map against Wargaming Pay to win. It is a best of three, and the winner moves on to the final, which is, of course, quite the big deal. Right, so the next map shall be Trident. Oh. Oh, indeed. And that Trident is fun. should make it tournament mode again, so Orlon. Oh, hello. Thank you, Greenblade, for the sub, and anyone else I might have missed while casting. The thing, though, that division they had, or that blob, if the Amagis hadn't died or gotten so forced so far back, one counter radar and three squishy cruisers in the open. Mm -hmm. Like, Amagis could have eaten them alive, so it's not like it's an automatic win tactic. Oh, no. Not they, by any they, they, they get caught by a Chapai that's behind an island radaring them, and two battleships just firing at will. Yeah. <laughs> that's not fun. Yeah. The uh, Wargaming Pay to Win decision to, to recommit the Amagi towards A e. was very... Especially like, after they just got an Amagi kill, and they had yeah. this 2 versus 1 battleship advantage, like, yeah, I was like, okay, now they, now they can do something about that blob. And then he just goes, woo, YOLO, <laughs> and dies. I never even realized the fact that I was making a French joke when I called that UFR blob a snail. <laughs> Like a deadly snail crawling around, mm -hmm. killing everything. <laughs> I, I didn't even consider it. UFR snail confirmed. What's the word for that? The snail course. Huh? Well, snails are good. If you ever, ever had garlic snails. Oh yeah, it's excellent. It's so tasty. Escargot, that's the one. Oh. I'm pretty sure our pronunciation is as good as my French. You are probably, probably not wrong. <laughs> probably. <laughs> like, it was the worst when I when we get to preview the French ships, and I was oh, like trying to say yeah. the names, and I have a bunch of French subs as well, and they were just like a constant face bomb. No, no! <laughs> That's not how you say it! <laughs> Alright, so, so we're we... waiting for map 2. But tres. You can tell it's a... I don't know if it's because it's Summer. Um, Kings of the Sea. Summer King. 
uh, that of course means there's slightly less like players and such participating, but first time TVA semi, potential first time either UFR or we're gonna pay to win make a final, and first time Vikings quarter. But then again, there's a lot of there's a lot of teams that have been knocked out in groups, so can't really in that sense can't really like uh, diminish their achievements. No, no, definitely not. Because I mean, I mean, let's look at the groups. We got teams that were knocked out include uh, Sea Kitchen against all odds, TTT, and actually, did they get knocked out in groups or first playoff round? I can't remember. Room is up, by the way. Yeah, and Flying Ducks, MDiv X, Roger, Roger. Trident, though. Yeah, buddy. Tournaments need more Trident. I think we're gonna lobby for just Trident only competitive. Trident to be honest. only, like <laughs> only Bismarck allowed. <laughs> Bismarcks and um, like the uh, the gunboat Russian DDs with the short range, the suicide torps. Let's go. Oh, uh, D Dersky? No guns allowed. <laughs> This says four spectators. I wonder if there's enough spectator spots. him a bit. <laughs> I like watching teams win, okay. Alarm Flum was playing. <laughs> Timeouts my Moobot has issued today. Flamo never tilts, confirmed. Anyone who claims otherwise, fake news. Yep, lies and slander, dude. Indeed. Or libel, isn't libel the written one? And yeah, I think slander, slander is, is spoken. Yeah, uh, libel, libel is written. Is written yeah. Okay, are we going live? We're missing one person. Who are we missing? Um, six. I think Helen. Caster. There we go. Yeah. So, this deciding map. Well, not necessarily deciding. Wargaming pay to win needs to win this game to stay alive in the semi-final, or stay alive. Yeah, stay alive in the semi-final. And mm -hmm. UFR, if they win, they move on right into their first ever Kings of the Sea final. Yeah. Wonder if we're gonna see some of that good old uh, UFR aggression thing. Trident Indeed. is certainly the map for it. Yeah, Trident is kind of designed for. Like, I feel like if UFR could design a map, they designed Trident. Yeah, the only thing that would need is like lower all the islands so you can or raise them so you can shoot over them so you have to go like cover to cover you know did you escargot apparently just means snail you're a yeah, muppet that, no that's the that's the dish right well i mean 
Can't I just call it snail, if that's literally the French word for it? Yeah, but, you know. Oh, you have to be fancy? Yeah, dude. Fancy. fancy. <laughs> I'm go gonna eat me them snails versus I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy some escargot. Come on now. I mean anyone who speak understands what it means, you, you don't sound any fancier to that. No, but you know, those are not the people oh, you're yeah, trying oh, to impress yeah. anyway, right? Alright. So when, when it's the dumb blonde grill that you have with you, that's when no, you use escargot. Just shut your mouth right? <laughs> <laughs> I did no damage? What? Rigged! Hundred percent rigged. Let's see. We have. What do we even have? Let's start. Chapaev, Chapaev, Kultus of Benson, Benson, Atago. Double NC. This isn't the UFR I know and love. This is not the UFR I know and love. Double NC. Okay. Wargaming, oh, pay to win on the other hand. Double Amagi, double Charles Martel. Now that's what I want to see. Even a Loy Yang in there? God damn. That's that mm -hmm. right attitude. UFR. Going a bit too stereotypically French with this setup. With the stationary NC plane. So, Benson from Wargaming Pay to Win heading over towards C. A Lo Yang seems to be moving towards A, backed up by the Double Charge Martel and the Amagi. So they're doing uh, the AC split. Atago being sent towards A, surprising me, and. Wait, is that Benson? What is this Benson doing? Benson also heading towards A and with an NC. And the entire rest of the fleet being sent to C. So I think both these fleets are going to clash at C big time. I think that's the plan here. Let's see if perhaps uh, our battleship players will have a bit better luck with staying alive this game. Yeah. That because would be... I felt last game they were more target practice than anything else. Besides, uh, besides was it Zagamore? Mm -hmm. Was he the NC? Can't remember. But the NC that sat north of B, he did a good job of staying alive. Pretty sure that was Sagamaria. Some early carrier spotting. Very, very passive towards C, since they got early plane detection. The Chapaya had to do a full circle around. Very passive from both teams. Benson tried reversing into C, but instantly bailed after dropping Torp, so... Both of them very hesitant to really do any... Com commit to anything at this point. And uh, considering... Well, I understand if Wargaming is hesitant, considering if they lose this game, they're out. They're out at a respectable fourth place, mm -hmm. but still out. Benson smoking up the NC. Yeah, it is. I'm pretty sure it was Zagamore earlier. He's getting into a pretty damn good position between A and B, which will deny a lot of plane spotting in this area because uh, full AA build NC is, of course, a terrifying AA power. Yeah, it's a monster. Eats planes. Indeed. Very, very passive. From both and teams. Uh, finally, we have the Benson from UFR slowly crawling into B to contest that. Uh, I actually like this. Um, he smoked up so the NC could push up right next to him. So any attempt to plane spot this Benson is going to result in a lot of shot down planes. The plane spot? Or is that a radar? Oh, big AP volley coming in on the Kutuzov, I think. X Men. Is he prepared for this? He is not. He's sitting still. This could be a devastating. Oh no, he shot a bit too far in the back. He did not take into account the slight acceleration and just barely, just barely missed. And meanwhile, the Chapaev and Kutuzov from UFR are also eating a significant amount of chunk. Oh, Benson gets reset. Carrier drop is dodged, but it forces Benson out of the cap. Uh, the carrier does lose, lose all his planes, but it might have been an okay trade, because the Benson is completely forced out of position now. 
Meanwhile, Carrier spots the Lord Yang in A. The question is, can they actually reset him? They do have Torp setting his way, and I don't know. Are just, is he running Hydra? The Lord Yang in A. No. I think he'll, he's going to get the cap and accelerate in time to get out of there. Yeah, the torpedoes are coming in now. Okay, so probably a Targa Torp since they were spotted so early. Yeah, if that if those Torps came 10 seconds earlier, I could have negated the cap and maybe even hit the Lo Yang. And then? Meanwhile, Wargaming Pay to Win getting kind of zoned out of C. Ish. A radar? Probably. Well, Kudus have caught out of smoke, and that's the boom boom. That's the devastating that you talked about. This time right? he did not miss, and oh my yeah. god, another similar chunk on the Chapayev. Chapayev down to a third. Yeah. This time Sagamore did not miss the radar opportunity. This time he did, took full advantage. And once again, UFR has this incredibly that's a slam nasty. Dunk, man. Yeah, they have this incredibly nasty double radar comp, double or like blob. Chapayev, Chapayev, Kutusov. And that allows them to chain radars. And there's another radar again, I think. Yeah, that's another radar. And this there's chap I no thought gonna was... That, even the first salvo. Nope, yep. nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Such a brutal blob to come up against, especially when they synergize it with the two NCs. Uh, yeah. NC, of course, especially good at devastating pretty much anything because of the yeah. great weapon accuracy. So, the great Sigma on those guns. So, when they do get the opportunity to fire, well, we're going to see devastating strikes. And that's that basically means that in, the entire A flank has now collapsed from Wargaming Pay to Win, which means that this blob that was at A or at C will be able to reposition towards B. And at this point, Wargaming Pay to Win is going to be fairly boxed in without much to do. Yeah, there's they're not much they can do, man. Like, Staring down, being double capped, and they lost Kudusov, Chapayev this early. Like, the only thing they have left is two Shars Martels, which are, to their credit, putting a lot of pressure on Zagamore in the North Carolina. Indeed. But the Amagi forced to bail, and I mean, we have double cap advantage, or uh, cap advantage, and two kills. Yep. That was their only radar cruiser as well. Ouch only radar cruiser so the only way they can consist uh, can contest something smoked up is with the loyang hydra that is nasty so the french doom snail is now crawling towards b ever so slowly doom escargot right? yeah no doom snail it's gonna screw your escargot it's snail the French, the French snail crawling from C slowly towards B. Yeah. They, they have uh, at least I think they have two hydras in this group as well. Um, I see the hydra sun pop up every now and then. There so, is torpedoes coming in. Yeah, they are them. spotted though. Okay. This he needs to accelerate a bit to dodge them, otherwise he'll take one on his tail or stern. No, they run out. Arumata, it's a huge chunk from the Amagi, I assume. He is alive, but only barely. Kind of playing with fire, shooting from the smoke in case the Amagi blind fires. Is he gonna go? I think he's gonna go for the blind fire. Um, not much else they can do at this stage. Indeed. Is he gonna go for it? Or is he just gonna let himself get undetected? But he's got plane spotting, he's not gonna get undetected, might as well shoot. Oh, he went for the, the NC instead. NC is giving front uh, Barbette Citadel, so there's potential yeah. for big damage here. Nope, no, no damage big. at all. This island gives such nice cover to just that waterline area. Once again, a radar popped from the Doomsnail. No, actually, that's Defensive AA and Hydro from the Doomsnail. I think they're just spotting. They're just spotting this Loyang otherwise. General Olsen in the, the Loyang spotted. Yeah, triple cruisers nailing him. Have fun. Enjoy. 
And if he gets undetected, you bet there's gonna be a radar ready for him. And now the Benson's open up on him as well. Might as well get a quick little damage in there. Yeah, indeed. He's not enjoying life at this point. That's the radar, right? Nope, that was, plane, that was plane. That was plane. plane get run out, and now here's the instant radar right after. He's and he's reach, grounded. Though. Yep. Are they in radar range? Yep. He is. He is 10.9 km away from the chopper, which is of course 800 meters to spare. And he's there. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. And the doom snail claims another victim and continues devouring its way into being. Oh, I'm August spotted. Smoke running out. And oh, we can see him this. start melting. Let's see. Let's see how fast this is. Indeed. He's giving he takes a blind shot one. in. If he hits the low HP one, he might get a kill. Nope, no hits on the low HP one. Wasn't he full HP when it started? Oh, uh, the Amagi? Yeah. He was missing maybe 5k, something like that. This is with a repair running as well. This is absolutely just filthy amounts of damage. And uh, the blind shot coming back in return. He's just melting though. We are gonna have UFR, the first ever French team to make it to Kings of the Sea final. He did get him. He did uh, get out of mother in the smoke. Oh, he did get. That was nice, Levan. He got a bit lucky because. Uh, he had basically a 1 in 3 chance of hitting the low HP dude, and he hit the guy that had 2k health. Adding even more RNG. Yep. Meanwhile though, the Martel gets killed by Zagamore, who's been sniping quite a few of those cruisers across the map. And at this point, Amagi down to 14, 13k health. Jesus. That IFG. Yep. The Doom Snail indeed. Finally, he's undetected. Oh, never mind. Never mind, just a prank. Meanwhile, UFR is capping A as well, which is the final cap that was in Wargaming Pay to Win's hands. Very, very convincing from UFR here. Indeed. This was. I, I don't think either game was ever in any doubt. Um, Wargaming Pay to Win didn't have a good response for the double grouped up uh, radars. They. They never really got the counter radar off, like mm -hmm. radar them and get them deleted. Instead, it was always UFR that got the opening radar and opening kill and punished them with it. I feel like uh, against double chopper, we kind of need a double chopper maybe of your own, or just a very safely positioned chopper behind an island that can counter radar without being killed. You can tell how 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 done it is by Malimu just pushing here. Yeah. This is very, very much done. Yeah, I mean, crawling back from losing two of your cruisers like that, that early. Malamu, not really Malamu, a whole Malamu lot Malamu you just can do. Going YOLO and 956 points. Even if Malamu dies, uh, like, they make up those points so quickly. Yeah. Benson pops out of smoke. Battleship AP misses. Proximity spotting them both now. And game is about to end and it runs out. And yeah. congratulations to UFR, our first finalist. And damn, if that wasn't a very convincing, very convincing performance from the French team. Oh, I, yes. I don't think there can be any doubt of which team was uh, the better one in this matchup. I felt no. like Wargaming Pay to Win never really had a chance against this Doom Snail that just kind of ran them over. Yeah. Very impressive. The only, the only counter you have to that is Battleship Fire, really, because... Indeed. Well, you need Counter Radar plus Battleship Fire or, alternatively, grouped up torpedoes 
uh, yeah. like multiple two because the thing with that kind of blob is that it's a fairly small area with multiple ships in it so a gr good cross torp either forces them out of the smoke or kills them and uh, all they what they needed was that cross torp or a good counter radar and they failed to get either one done um, the one time they had a chop five in somewhat in position he was radared first and instantly deleted you saw it was the priority target for their team as well that yeah. ship focused only him, and Kotosov was taken out second. Because they know exactly what the weakness is, and that's of course a counter radar. But well done to them. Our first finalist, UFR, United Francophone, aka the French team. Unite Escargot. Unite Escargot. Unite Dunsne. Mm. Can I get some Flamo FRs in uh, chat in honor of this uh, great French That's going to be victory. the new meta, man. The Doomsnail. Indeed. Well, it's it's been a while. I mean, people have played it similarly, but that kind of blob and both Chapaevs grouped together, I don't think people have been using that much. It seems very, very strong, though. It's very, very strong, but it's also very, very... You dedicate so much... Because you need a DD, a Kudasov, two Chapaevs. That's, you know, almost half your team. Indeed. But hey, it worked. It worked. It was very efficient. All right. So now we're waiting for OM versus uh, TVA, and that's set to start now. Oh. Yep. Twenty-one hundred. Roger. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. Is Flamo just the... trolling him with the Danish remarks? No, isolate this Danish. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, hundred percent. 